Are food rules dictating what foods you eat and what foods you don't eat? If so, you're gonna wanna watch this video. Hi, I'm Rachel Fine. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist specializing in nutrition for dancers. I teach dancers just like you, along with dance parents and dance educators, how to fuel their bodies in the most supportive and sustainable way. Today we're talking about one of the steps within my program, The Healthy Dancer, and that's the idea of actually dismantling the very rules that we built around our food choices, most often stemming from dancer diet culture. So for those unfamiliar, the reason why we are wanting to dismantle food rules is because in order to feel more supported with our food choices, we need to learn how to fuel our bodies without feeling restricted or even fearful about certain foods and food groups. And the problem is that dancer diet culture and arguably wellness culture have really handed us years and years and years of information that have made it super difficult for us to truly understand what it means to eat, quote unquote, healthfully. And what we often see is something that I've previously spoken about. And one of the most common things that I see amongst dancers, it's something I've spoken about many times before, is this idea of, quote unquote, clean eating or even just wanting to stick to a quote unquote healthier diet. And what this often entails are a lot of rules around foods that we should and shouldn't be eating, whether it's for the purpose of our health or performance. Now, I've previously spoken about the concept of nutrient density and how nutrient density can be a helpful tool in our decision making around food. But here's the problem. If that information is provided to you without much context, it's very common for dancers, especially those with perfectionist and type A tendencies to take that information to the 200th degree. Spoiler, this is what I struggled with prior to becoming a dietitian for dancers. I felt that in order to best support my performance as a dancer, I had to stick to the healthiest and most nutrient dense foods possible. And while nutrient dense foods are truly supportive for our bodies, having an all or nothing or black and white mindset towards them will only lead us to eventual burnout. And this is where food rules most commonly stem from. In other words, they're definitive amounts or maybe it's even times in which you are allowing yourself to eat these foods. And the really confusing thing about this is that food rules can come up at any time for a dancer. This is why we really have to learn how to dismantle them. Food rules are most common to come up, believe it or not, from a practitioner, like a health professional. So whether you are working with a coach or a doctor, just know that information about food and nutrition, if it sounds super definitive and limiting, it's likely to actually be a food rule. And as mentioned, these food rules tend to feel very rigid and ultimately lead us to very inflexible eating patterns. And while for some, food rules can feel like a comforting sense of control over how you're fueling your body, I want to assure you that that sense of control is actually quite fleeting. And we can learn how to more proactively fuel our bodies without needing to rely on limiting and rigid food rules. And this is because a common cycle often results when we are experiencing food rules. Essentially, a resulting factor of that desire to micromanage our food choices is often this eventual desire to want to revolt from those very same rules. And the more we are relying on those external food rules to dictate what we should eat, when we should eat, and how we should eat, the more disconnected we eventually feel from being able to actually fuel our bodies in a supportive way. Let's talk about some examples of food rules. So I'm gonna say a few and just start to reflect and think about if any of these might sound relatable for you. Here goes. I cannot eat white bread. Processed foods are so bad for me, I try to avoid them. Dark chocolate is the only type of chocolate I'll let myself eat because it's healthier. I can eat past 8 p.m. I just can't. 
No way will I keep peanut butter in the house. It's way too high in calories. Do any of them sound relatable? The most common food rules that I see amongst dancers usually have to do with processed foods. And a lot of this is because of the fear mongering that happens from dancer diet culture around these options. So to build that supportive fueling plan, we need to learn how to dismantle these rules. And granting ourselves with unconditional permission, we're gonna talk about what that means in just a bit, is one of the first steps. Unconditional permission essentially means that you are allowing yourself to experience a variety of different foods, so whether those are foods that you or dance or diet culture has deemed to be quote unquote less healthy, bad, or whatever it might be, you're allowing yourself to experience or eat those foods without any strings attached. For example, needing to restrict future food intake in order to make up for the calories experienced from that more indulgent meal or snack, or needing to go to the gym or take an extra dance class in order to burn off those calories. Those are all conditions that we're placing upon food. We need to first start by removing those conditions, allowing for the actual experience to eat those foods. Now within this experience, that's what we're gonna talk about with some techniques that are utilized with the dancers and the healthy dancer. So first things first is I want you to sit down and just start to identify any food rules that you might have. This is essentially what I was doing earlier when I was probing you to explore to see if any of these more common food rules sound relatable. Once you've identified a handful of food rules, now comes the challenge points. One thing that separates my program from most others is that we work slowly, one at a time. I never expect a dancer to dismantle all of their food rules in the first week of us working together. No, we do it one step at a time and as a dancer feels comfortable. I've been, working for, I've been working with dancers for a really long time and some of them will actually take years to dismantle even just a couple food rules. And that's okay, that's all part of the journey. So now what do we actually do when we're challenging ourselves with our food rules? First things first, we want to ensure that we can focus on mindful eating techniques. Now, I'm not gonna to spend too much time actually breaking down what mindful eating techniques are because I do that in a previous video. What I really want you to focus on here is setting yourself up to actually do this. I've also previously spoken about how to both listen to and honor hunger cues. The best way to expose yourself to fear foods or trigger foods is to do so when you are currently experiencing appetite regulation, not appetite dysregulation. So for dancers who are in eating disorder recovery and actively working through weight restoration, it's not necessarily gonna be the most ideal time for us to challenge your food rules. Of course, we start to talk about this and talk about future exposure work, but in the very beginnings of that treatment, we're really focusing on just making sure that we're getting your body to a healthy place that's sufficiently nourished. So now if you are experiencing potential signs of being undernourished, this might include regular instances of hovering towards the extremes of the hunger fullness scale. So for example, you find that you are either feeling extremely hungry throughout your day or you are feeling extremely full throughout your day and truly having a hard time acknowledging any middle ground along the hunger fullness scale. This might be a sign that you are actually undernourished and we need to first work on proactive fueling. This would also be the time where I highly encourage you to reach out because working alongside a licensed registered dietitian nutritionist is really going to support you in this work. Exposure work with food rules can be an extremely sensitive process for a lot of dancers and doing it alongside credible support is encouraged. Now on this note of making sure that you are set up for actually dismantling your food rules is the idea, as I mentioned earlier, of proactive fueling to honor practical hunger. And essentially this means is planning a flexible meal and snack routine, again, so that we can ensure that your body is adequately nourished. Only then, when we've identified that you are at the healthiest place in regards to nourishment, this is where dismantling those food fears is going to become slightly easier. But don't get me wrong, it's still quite a challenging process. 
utilizing those mindful eating techniques during the instances of dismantling and reintroducing those food fears is super helpful. This essentially means that you are serving yourself that food, you are sitting down in what I would encourage to be a very comfortable environment. So it might be hard to break a food rule if you are eating on the go, eating during transit, maybe eating in a large cafeteria with friends. You might want to first start by dismantling your food rules and food fears in a quieter environment. And you can have some dancers light candles, get comfortable, make it as pleasant as possible. And this is where in the Healthy Dancer, we start to do some journaling prompts throughout the process really taking the time to notice how you're feeling from a mindset perspective, but also from a physical perspective. Identifying your levels of hunger and your levels of fullness are just part of the process. So now that you've started to work on dismantling these rules and challenging these fears, I want you to realize that food rules don't go anywhere too far, especially if you've only challenged them once. This work is consistent. It's a journey. We need to consider how we can keep up with consistently exposing ourselves to those very foods. So although the process of actually dismantling food rules isn't too complicated, it is quite challenging and often takes a long time for us to actually unlearn these messages and relearn more supportive ones. If you need more help, then I highly encourage you first just check out my blog, dancenutrition.com, because I've dedicated that as a free resource to help with this process of unlearning and relearning more supportive food beliefs. But to take your support one step deeper, that's where you're going to want to sign up for The Healthy Dancer. I've got several different types of membership levels in order to provide an economical price point that works for you. If you found this helpful, just give me a like and a subscribe so that you're the first to know when I post new content. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon.